Rusty Wright from the legendary bronc riding Wright family of Milford, Utah. Thank you so much for joining us for three questions. Well, thanks for having me. This is, this is a great opportunity for us. <laughs> now, the Wright family is an institution in bronc riding in the American rodeo scene. Your father, Cody, your uncles, let me get it right, Jake, Jesse, Alex, and Spencer, all legendary. Yeah. What is it that brought your family into rodeo and what keeps you there? Well, I'm honestly not too sure what really brought us into it, but I know it's the adrenaline and the, the thrill of riding bucking horses that keeps us there. And, you know, and being together as a family is another thing that really uh, is really fun about it. So that's, I know that's why I do it. I love it. And it's a family thing. So. Yeah, it certainly is a family <laughs> thing. How many of your family members direct and extended ride uh, I got me and Ryder my, me and, he's my little brother Ryder we ride in the PRCA and then my little brother Stetson's in high school and then, but then we got my dad uh, Jake Jesse Alex and Spencer they're riding the PRCA so th I would say is that That's eight a, about eight, eight, eight of you yeah <laughs> a lot of rights yeah. on that on then, that tote board yeah when we got uh, my dad's sister Rebecca she married uh, Coburn Bradshaw, he's a bronc rider, so if you count him, there's one more. <laughs> Nine of you yeah. out there. Now, rodeo is a very difficult way of life. What are some of the challenges that you face, and what are some of the rewards? Uh, the challenges is being away from home, and that's probably the toughest one, being away from home, especially when you're starting a family. It's really rough to say bye when they're, they're getting old enough to start crying when you walk out the door. It makes it really tough. But then, like, uh, like broken bones and stuff, this stuff that's inevitable, you know, it's going to happen. So you just got to fight through it. And But the rewards, I ain't got it yet, but the gold buckle, that's going to be worth it when you get one of them. And my dad's got two of them. Uh, Spencer's got one and Jesse's got one. So I know them guys felt rewarded when they got there. So I, I'm just going to keep pushing until I get it and hopefully feel rewarded. <laughs> Can, can you make a living as a rodeo cowboy? That's all I do. That's my job, rodeoing. So I'm actually, I, th I feel like I do pretty good making a living at it. Uh, but I, that's what I wanted to do when I was little. So I really made sure I practiced hard and uh, put all my effort towards rodeoing because I knew that's what I was going to try to do to make a living. So I, I, yes, you can make a living. <laughs> How long do you have to practice before you can, number one, become really good, and number two, start to make a living at it? Well, that's, I think it's different for everybody. Like me, it took me a lot more practice horses to, for it to start clicking and rolling for me than, than my little brothers did. They, honestly, they got on their first horse and rode it like you're supposed to, and it took me a long time. I got, took a couple dirt naps, and <laughs> it took longer, but I'd say I, I never really started making enough to make a living until 2015 so that was probably six seven years for me it took riding bronx till i was making enough money to where i didn't need to do anything else just ride bronx now now you describe your schedule during the year as being full time from what february to december is that right basically february J january they have some rodeos but it's kind of a slower time of the year but it's it's full time all year round. Uh, October is a little slow too, I guess. But uh, you rodeo all year for that uh, big rodeo in December down there in Vegas, and that's actually the real big payday too. That's the Christmas bonus, I guess you'd say. <laughs> Describe your life as considering you're on the road all the time for a rodeo. Describe what a typical week is like for you. Oh, a typical week. I guess we we usually leave home it seems like on a weekend uh, Thursday or Friday and uh, we usually wait till the last second to actually leave so we have to really haul butt to the rodeo and then ride the first rodeo and you just get in the truck drive to the next one get in, get in the truck drive the next one you're in the truck constantly I guess some people would say we kind of live like a uh, nomads <laughs> I don't even know I don't, I don't even know the <laughs> Just a bunch of, I don't even know, just... Gypsies yeah, wandering. <laughs> wandering, yeah, just wandering going from, from one place to the next. So, wow. Yeah, uh, I guess it's pretty, 
it, being with my family though, it makes the traveling a lot better because you're not in the truck with some guys you don't know. But I guess if you don't know them, you're gonna know them by the time you're done rodeoing. So yeah. uh, it's just lots of driving. That's what we do and have ride Bronx, drive ride Bronx. <laughs> You started out when you were, what, 14, is that right? 15. 15, yeah. okay. Now, and describe what that was like. When you first started riding Bronx, tell me what that was like. Were you afraid at all? Uh, my very first Bronx ever, I really wasn't afraid. I was really excited and anxious uh, until I got off. Well, I didn't even get off. I, <laughs> I, <bucked. laughs> I nodded my head and everything went black. And I don't remember, I don't really remember nothing until I hit the ground and I was like, what the heck? And it was like that for a long time, but I do remember the first horse I ever it ever clicked for me. I uh, got off and I was like, oh man, this is what I'm gonna do forever, <laughs> as long as I can. And it's just, you can't really describe the feeling. It's uh, smooth, but not smooth at the same time. Yeah. Like my dad told, said one time, it's, you feel like you're in control, but you're totally out of control. <laughs> so. Now you rode, you rode uh, bulls for a while. Tell me what that was like. That bull riding was scary. That's, I don't even, looking back on it, I don't know how I enjoyed it. <laughs> my little brothers were really good at it though, and they love it. They still ride bulls a little bit, but I didn't really, I wasn't as good as them, so I got hurt a lot more. And, I mean, I was a little bit, I was scared of the bull riding, I think, but. What see, happened to you? You know, I, I busted a couple bones when I was in eighth grade in my arm, and then I got healed up from that, and my freshman year of high school, I got stepped on by a bull at the Dixie Six down in St. George and collapsed my lung and bruised a couple ribs and stuff, so I Were decided, you wearing a vest? I was wearing a vest and a helmet and a mouthpiece. I was completely, the only thing I was missing was bubble wrap. <laughs> 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 so wh when did you decide that bulls just really weren't for you? Uh, laying in the hospital from Klaus my lung, I just decided I'm going to hang up the bull rope. And I, when I got out of the hospital, I talked to my dad and I asked him about riding Bronx. And he got me a Bronx saddle and he helped me do what I needed to do to start riding. Now being a rodeo athlete requires that you have strength, agility, technique and endurance but there is an X factor in there there's something else that you gotta have to be successful what is it it's kind of a mental deal you, you gotta have a strong you gotta be able to block things out like push uh, the fear and getting hurt and stuff like that to the back of your head and keeping it there and not thinking about it is is you can be in the best shape in the world better than anybody out there going on the road but if your mind's not right you ain't gonna ride Bronx very well because if you're scared of getting hurt or not really if you don't really love what you're doing it just don't work out so I I, th I think to me it's a lot of mental and I, I think you, like I said you could be in the best shape but if your head's not in it you're probably not going to be very successful at it. <laughs> how, how do you physically prepare for a ride? Like at the rodeo? Yeah. Well, at the rodeo or before? I mean, certainly you got to be in great shape to do this. Yeah, you know, lots of guys get trainers and stuff. You know, and uh, I just when I'm home, I you know might go running or something. I haven't really been doing a lot of running since I broke my leg last August. But you know, some push-ups and sit-ups and uh, just watching tapes of yourself or of somebody that you want to ride like. That's really part of training you the mental deal watching who you want to ride like like me my dad I like watching his rides because that's what I want to look like when I ride so but the and then when we get to the rodeo I really don't I don't stretch because I I used to stretch and I uh, tore my growing one time and they I, I heard that if you something about stretching your growing getting it all loosened up it's easier to tear so I quit stretching I might do a little bit of stretching afterwards once my muscles are warmed up so I'm not so sore but other than that I just kind of keep it simple <laughs> well, well the ride itself is plenty of a workout isn't it yeah it is you come back and you're sweating like no other and you know, breathing hard it can't, you couldn't believe it it's only eight seconds but you get pretty worked up in that eight seconds <laughs> when you're in the chute and they're just about to open that gate what are you thinking what's going through your head uh, be aggressive and lift on my bronc rein. That's usually the last thing you're supposed to lift on your rein when you're uh, riding bronc. That's what keeps you in your saddle. 
And so that's usually the last thing I'm thinking when I nod my head is lift on my rein and, you know, be aggressive because you have to be really aggressive to keep up with them animals. Well, but, when you say aggressive, what do you mean by aggressive? Like quick. Like, uh, I don't know, like when you throw your feet up the front, you got to you spur them, you just do it with everything you have. Be aggressive. Like when you make the move, make it now and before, like you can't, like if you have to think about it, it's probably too late and you're going to get bucked off. It's got to be just kind of a reaction and uh that's aggressive. Just is a, give it all you got when you're going out there riding. When you land in that dirt, does that hurt? Uh, sometimes it does. There's certain times, but sometimes you're so mad before you hit the ground that you don't even <laughs> feel it. But uh, just the other day, we was at the Calgary Stampede, and I got bucked off and just felt like I just got laid down on the bed, all nice and soft. But <laughs> it didn't hurt at all. But then I watched the video back, and it looked like it hurt a little bit. I'm a little bit sore this week. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're not on the road, are you riding at home? Are you practicing at home? I don't as much. Uh, I don't practice as much because I get on so much at the, at the rodeos. But if I am having troubles and in a slump, not riding very good, I'll go home and get on a practice horse and at home and fix what needs to be fixed or whatever, just like a, you know, baseball player. <laughs> their, their batting's not being very good. They go swing the bat a couple times pitch machine something it's kind of similar to that just with the horse <laughs> getting hurt as a rodeo athlete is just part of the territory because yeah. you're gonna get hurt yeah what's the baddest you've been hurt while riding Bronx Bronx uh, I probably last August I broke my tibia and fibia in Bremerton Washington I got I was riding across there and my foot went in my saddle and I sat down on it and it just it snapped it and I had a compound fracture oh. I was out from, that was on August 25th, and I uh, was out until the NFR in December. Oh, boy. I was still pretty. That was probably the worst one. I got a, a rod in my tibia and then some screws. My, they just let the, that fibula, fibula uh, heal up with by itself. But that's probably the worst one. I shattered my humerus, I guess, too, riding Bronx. But that, I don't think, feel like that one was as bad as my leg. <laughs> <laughs> So, so then, if you get hurt like that, and you're talking about mental toughness, how do you avoid becoming timid when you know you're going to get hurt? <clears throat> See that when I come back from breaking my leg in August, I, I getting hurt was right there in the front of my like, I was like, I don't want to get hurt again. I need to, you know. And I wasn't riding very good. I you could just see my confidence was low. I, like I wasn't being aggressive, like I was talking about. I, it just looked like I was riding safe, trying not to get hurt. And when you're r riding safe, you ain't gonna win no money. You might as well go home and get a job. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I don't. I just kept kind of working on it, t trying to get myself back to normal. And you know, it just not very long ago, it just started clicking again, and that stuff went to the back of my head, and I started riding better. But that, that does when you get hurt, it brings it. It makes you a little bit nervous there for a while about getting hurt again because. Shoot, you just got back from it, and yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, but riding, riding is in your DNA, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I, well, I don't want to, and I don't think I could do anything else with, or you know, being happy anyways yeah. with doing it. So, how long do you figure you can be a bronc rider and make money? Uh, if I take care of myself, <laughs> uh, shoot, you can ride broncs. My dad, he's 40 years old and still riding and still one of the best in the world. And I think he is the best in the world, but I'm a little biased. So, <laughs> But uh, he's still riding. So I think 45 or else until if the day I just quit ri like riding Bronx, the day I'll be done. So I don't really, my body might still be able, but if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. So <laughs> I don't know. It's I guess it's just a waiting game. <laughs> Let's talk about the animals for just a second. What is the difference between a bronking horse and any other kind of horse? Uh, saddle horses, they're a little more lax and they don't, they don't like to buck. They just kind of like to meander, you know, just they're a little bit more laid back. And then bucking horses, they like to, they don't like you on their back. They want to buck you off and, uh, you know, bucking horses like it just as much as we do. Uh, you know, some days I don't want to ride broncs and I, don't do very good that day and that's the same with horses you can, one day a horse will be best horse in the world but then if that day he don't want to do it you he don't and you usually get a re-ride you know it's they're just a little bit more uh, wild I guess is the difference in them yeah. 
do, do you train a bronc, a bronking horse? Or? No, you can't train a horse to buck. It's they just gotta want to do it. You, like we've had practice horses. Like we've got some bucking horses that we wanted to try to buck and they just didn't. They just run right off. Don't buck. Not one iota. Just. Even with the flank strap yeah, on? Yeah, the flank don't make them buck, it just slows them down. Like the wh horses, when they're running across, if they don't want to buck, they're run, they won't be able to run as fast. As soon as you trip that flank, they'll be able to run like sea biscuit. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, let's see here. The people for the ethical treatment of animals, or PETA, sometimes they'll complain and even protest uh, the treatment of animals in the rodeo. Do they have a point? No, <laughs> they don't. Uh, the the rodeo uh, animals they're treated honestly better than we are. They got uh, well, I wouldn't say that. I better not say better than we are. They treat us good, but they they are treated. They get fed before you, know, you wake up in the morning. You have horses and animals. They're fed before you eat, uh, and then they're checked on before you go to bed. And just they're taken care of better than. They just need to come hang around rodeo, come back behind the scenes and take a look at it because they really don't know how well they are treated. They'd be surprised. A, a lot of folks see the event itself and see the bulls jumping around and the Bronx jumping around and bucking and all of that and think that they're in distress. Are those animals in distress during those events? No, I, they're not. I, I, I guess it's, it's your opinion, I guess, but... I, I really know they're they're not. I don't think so. So, like, there's horses that you can, uh, as soon as they're done bucking in the arena, you walk in the back pen. You can walk right up to them and pet them. Like one of the best horses there ever was, Lunatic Fringe. You can lead him around with a lead rope, just like a tame horse. But he just wanted to buck when he was in his bucking shoes. So you just don't get on his back. Yeah. <laughs> well, shoot, I actually, when my dad was in college, there was a horse. I'm not gonna say his name. I can't remember the na uh, the horse's name, but he they would put me on him at the college rodeo and lead him around like and then they'd put him in the buck and shoots and I remember one time Jesse Davis got on him and they went out there and bucked him off like <laughs> they, and they led me around on him out there when I was a little kid and then put him in the buck and shoots so that just goes to show you that they're they're not they don't they're not made to buck they you know they just want to and, and they're not abused they're not the abused no yeah. Shoot, we get abused more than they do. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Days of 47 Rodeo is coming up here, and I know you've got a rodeo between now and then, but the Days of 47 Rodeo is coming up, and since your family lives in Utah, what does it mean for you and the rest of your clan to be involved in that event? Uh, it's awesome deal. You know, we, they didn't do the PRCA here in Salt Lake last year, so I'm, I know all of us are really glad it's back, and uh, and it's even better than ever. They got tons of money, and and then where it's so close to home, our family, I'm bringing my family down to it, and uh, they're going to be able to watch, and you know, it's just a great rodeo, great stock, uh, win lots of money. It's it's an awesome deal. <laughs> <laughs> Your father, Cody, is a PRCA legend. How has he inspired you? Um, you know, shoot, just his bronc riding is unreal. Like, he's a freak of nature, you know. His, the way he rides, is, it's just better than anybody. He makes it look easy. I, I really think he's the best bronc rider ever there's been. So, you know, and he, the way he rides and how he, you know, how he lives, it, just it makes that's who I want to be you know not only the bronc rider is but the man he is and it just he just I don't know I've always looked up to him and wanted to be just like him so he, he's always inspired me to be the best I could be you know well you have his good looks I know that <laughs> yeah. well thank you because your mother still has <laughs> yeah <so. laughs> well Rusty Wright from the legendary bronc riding Wright yeah. family thank you so much for being part of three yeah. questions yeah, thanks for having me Ha <laughs>